Okay, so today we're going to start putting the uh, con rods on the crankshaft and then we'll be prepping the crankshaft or prepping the center uh, crankcase ready to put the crankshaft into the center case. I don't know how far we'll get because uh, we've still got quite a bit of prepping to do on the center case before we put the crankshaft in, but we're going to put the con rods on. So a few things to note before we start. First of all, yeah, following on from the previous uh, video where I struggled terribly to get this timing side bearing off the crankshaft, Neil Ellis got in touch with me and said, hey, there's a bearing separator and extractor that you can buy uh, from Screwfix, which is like a tool. Uh, they specialize in selling tools in the UK. And uh, sure enough, so fantastic. So for 20 quid, here's the bearing separator comes apart and then this goes down clamps down behind the bearing and hopefully cuts in between the shoulder and the edge of the bearing and just nudges it out that little bit clamp this tight around the back of the bearing then put the puller screw the puller into those <coughs> screws there and put the puller on the end of the shaft and pull the uh, uh, and pull the bearing off. Um, so that would make, if I'd have known about that, it would make life an awful lot easier. So it's a, it's a bearing separator and uh, extractor. I'm not sure, looking at it, if the bearing, if you could get the bearing off without damaging it, even using this, but it doesn't really matter because if you are going to take that bearing off, it's really only because you're going to replace it. Second thing is I've got all the shelves and things. I bought the shelves from the supplier and um here are the big end shells and uh, they're great and they came and they say minus 10 on the box and they say 10 thou on the uh on the shells great so then the mains came from the same supplier now they don't say 10 thou they just got a part number oh. so i got the shells out and looked uh part number yeah and on the other side uh, 3G, so they don't say minus 10 or anything, plus 10 in that case. So I thought, oh, crikey, are these, are these the right shells? So I ran the supplier and I said, yeah, yeah, they're definitely the right shells. And sure enough, in the manual uh, main bearing shells, part number 79027 is 10 thou undersize for the mains 9027. But always worth checking because they're both, both these bearings are from LF Harris. But for some reason, they mark the box and the shells as being 10 thou under for the big ends, but they don't mark the box or the shells as being 10 thou under or rather over for the uh, for the mains. Anyway, but obviously always worth double checking stuff like that. You know, I have heard of people putting the wrong size shells in, <laughs> you know, you know, not worth thinking about either, either, you know, clamping the coral so, don't, so it won't move. So too big or too small, and uh, or you know the con rod rolling around because you know they've reground the crank or something and put standard shells back in. Either way, a complete nightmare. Uh, next, I ordered some um, big end uh, big end nuts uh, to replace the uh, big end nuts on the con rod because you never want to reuse the big end nut nuts. They do have a tendency to come undone in use. I have heard of. You know them coming loose so the last thing so you don't use it again nuts reuse them so i ordered some new ones and these came pie crust or lester nuts now these are generally discredited you know just don't use them so i was a bit mad uh, anyway so i've got uh, i now got supplied with a proper uh, the proper sort of locking um, um i think these are called cleave lock or something like that nuts I'm not sure they are cleave lock nuts, but basically they're locking nuts that don't use nylon. So they do have a good locking um, uh, sort of uh, ability, um, but there's no, not like a nylon nut with a nylon sort of insert in the end. So I think there might be a cleave lock. I'm not sure uh, which which sort of seal on metal, but I, whatever the case, you use them once because they come on, they tighten. Uh, I'll use... Um, um, thread lock anyway but yeah don't use these damned uh, Leicester or pie crust nuts on your big ends i'm a bit mad that they supplied them uh finally of course we have a very very important assembly lube now on any bearing and a 
especially the plane bearings, especially uh, main bearings and especially camshafts. Uh, these are all plane bearings and um, it's very, very important to lubricate them. All these, uh, these uh, plane bearings that take the, uh, take the camshafts. Uh, because they have been known to see so it's assembly lube this is Lucas assembly lube um, I don't think it matters what type of assembly lube you use but do use assembly lube don't just use oil because assembly lube is designed to be sticky it stays there now how many months or even you know, certainly months before this engine is going to actually be started you know I've got to finish it give it back to the owner They've then got to sort the rest of the bike out, get the engine in the frame, get everything sorted, and then start the bike. It'll be months away, if not, you know, years in some case. So if you put oil on here, it will slowly seep away, disappear, you know, from the different bearings, and then you're in asking for trouble. So always use proper assembly lube, because even if you're planning to put, start the engine straight away, it doesn't matter. Use assembly lube, and then if there is a delay or even if there isn't, you know, assembly lube better than oil. So always use that because, you know, I have known engines, I have heard of engines, I haven't, I haven't known them, but I have heard of engines that have seized up on initial startup, in particular, these plane bearings on the on the camshafts, apparently they're culprit. So we've got, we'll, we'll be coming back to those in a minute when we've done the crankshaft to make sure they're absolutely perfect. Okay, but, uh, so those are the, the main things. What I'm going to do to begin with, I'm going to wipe, I've, I've actually put some lube on the journals, but I'm going to wipe that off because that's picked up a bit of dust over the last few days. Um, and we don't want that. And then we'll be fitting the shells and then putting the two outer con rods on. I will not be putting the center con rod on because I'm going to be fitting that after the barrels are on from the top. But when the two con rods are on, then we're going to turn our attention back to the centre crankcase and get that all ready and get all the bearings in, etc. and all cleaned and all the threads tapped out and so on, ready to take the crankshaft in the, uh, in the central uh, crankcase. Okay, uh, so first of all, I think as I mentioned when we were dismantling, there are centre punches, uh, centre punch marks on the side of the... Uh, con rods and their, and their caps and those punches always always align always on the same side and when, what someone had done when they reassembled the engine um, they got one of these caps around the wrong way I'm not uh, exactly sure what effect that would have had but it wouldn't have been good and I did notice that on one of the old uh, um, shells when I took it off even though they were pretty new uh, there was definite wear on that uh, on that side that have been put in the wrong way around. Anyway, yep, so I think all um, con rods are, are stamped like that. So just be aware they only go one way around. Then on these particular pistons, uh, con rods, um, there is, uh, th th these shells are, are full. There's no hole in the middle. Uh, there's a hole in the middle of the, um, uh, we'll see that in a minute. See that in the middle of the main bearing shells, there's a hole which obviously lets the oil in. Um, but um, there is no um, hole in the shells because these particular con rods do not have, they often, there's a, a drilling often on some con rods that goes up and it lubricates the small end where the piston is, where the gudgeon pin is. But these don't, uh, and therefore there's no need. To, to have a hole. So the oil pressure simply just feeds the big end, it does not feed the little end as well. So there's no hole, so it doesn't matter which way round these shells go. Sometimes you have to be careful um, uh, that on some engines, you on some con rods, you will have, uh, exactly the top end will have a hole that goes through for the little end, but the bottom end doesn't. And some shells will be solid and some will have a hole in. And obviously you need to put the one with the hole opposite the hole and the one that's solid on the solid side. Having said that, I think because people have actually got that round the wrong way in the past, that they if, if, if there is a hole in one side, they tend to sell the shells with, both, with holes in both sides. These old shells here, 
that I have forgotten to take this one out. That's got still it's got a hole in. There's no need to have a hole in. But all the old shells have got holes in. Um because obviously they're made for conrods that will that will does they do have a hole in one side, but all the shells have holes in so you can't accidentally uh you know put the solid one and block the hole up. Okay, but you always need to check that. Then you've got a little step in the uh in the conrod and in the um and, and in the uh cap and then there's a step in the shell and obviously what you do is you simply uh you put that in and so the step uh is going to line up uh, they, they, they they lock into each other so i'm going to do that off camera because all you need to do is just tap the shell and get it down into them i don't know if i can push it now yeah, push it a bit but it's not quite that's not bad see it's sticking at one end Oh, yes, I'm going to come back. I said I wasn't going to fit the centre con rod. I'm not going to fit it, but I am going to temporarily fit it. Because one problem that I've foreseen with fitting this centre con rod later, which is what I'm going to do in piston, is I, I can't check it for smoothness once it's already like in the engine, the crankshaft already in the engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the centre con rod temporarily and just check it's nice and smooth and turn in freely all the way around, then take it off again and then fit it fully later okay the uh, shells are in uh, only a couple of things to note um yeah i was just able to push them in when i put the camera down just with both thumbs push them down just to get them located uh, and the only other thing to note is of course that i did make sure that underneath the shells was clean nice and clean there's no grit or anything because obviously otherwise that will stop the shells from seating fully and can cause a high spot so make sure that the surface underneath the shells is clean before you fit them okay okay so uh, i'm going to put some assembly lube on this uh i mean on this shell and on this shell and uh, i've got the uh conrods marked i know that uh this is the time inside and the time inside corner i'm putting it back in the same place and that that faces outwards i've got my uh, mark there my punch mark there and i've got my punch mark there yep yep so just pop that on the journal there we go Let's pop it on now what i'm doing is i'm just doing a trial fitting so i'm now going to use the old um big end nuts so i just want to check how these are doing there we go. now we're on 18 foot pounds of uh, torque on the big end uh, bolt. Um, obviously, one thing I've forgotten to mention, you must double check, obviously your big end bolts are okay. Uh, and that the threads are totally clean. So otherwise, like I'm talking them up now, but obviously if the threads aren't clean, they're gonna get a false torque reading. And it is, I'm just doing it bit by bit because I don't wanna distort the uh, anything. So just a slight turn on each one. There we go. There we go. Right, now that I would say for me is a pretty perfect big end tension. It just goes around nicely. It doesn't flop, but it doesn't stick anywhere. It just falls under its own weight. That's always my uh, sort of uh, benchmark for, for doing these. It just falls slowly under its own weight. So I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo this then i'm going to use then i'm going to retighten it using the new uh nuts i didn't want to use the nuts this time because i knew i was going to take them off and put them back on again because i'm going to put um loctite on as well this time so uh and take those off and then put them back on tighten it back up check it again and hopefully we're okay on this one okay i've doubled check these now and i'm happy so 
to at the door. So that's quite nice. And that's quite nice. And then I've got the centre con rod fitted temporarily. And that's quite nice. So uh, all good. They've all talked up to uh, 18 foot pounds with some Loctite on. It's important to do them up just to the uh, specification of 18 um, because that's the tension that the, uh, the bolts are supposed to be under. Um, so if you over tighten them, that's what people do. They go, oh, well, you know, I'm going to make sure that they, they don't come undone because these nuts can come undone. So you say, oh, make sure they don't come undone. I'm going to tighten these up a bit more than it says. But what you're doing, all you're doing is stretching this big end bolt. Well, this big end bolt, then the massive, massive tension, if you think about it, because, um, you know, it's the, uh, it's holding the, uh, it's holding the, 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 the piston and everything on. And, and um, every, every time that piston goes up, it's stretching and flexing and compressing and all sorts. So it's got to be exactly the right tension on that um on that bolt so never ever over over tighten these nuts thinking you're you know making sure things are okay you're actually making them worse right so we're getting ready to put the crankshaft in the center crankcase 